What's up you guys, my name is Nico and in this video I'm gonna be talking about the selling of options. Now if you don't already understand the buying side of options, I recommend that you go to my previous video because it's just going to be easier to understand the selling side of options if you already understand the buying side of options. So the first thing that I wanna talk about and kind of clear up is the two different types of selling. So you can either sell to close a position when you're talking about options, or you can sell to open a position. Selling to close a position means selling a contract that you had already bought. So if you bought a call or a put option, and let's say you had an unrealized gain and you wanted to turn that into a realized profit, you would sell that contract so that you had that profit. So you bought a contract, you're holding on to it, and then you sell that contract and you get out of that options contract, that is selling to close a position. This video is gonna be about selling to open a position. So you can think of it as quite literally just creating an option, writing it out, and then selling it to the buyer. This is why option sellers are also known as option writers. As an option buyer, you pay a premium, and that premium that you pay is the most amount of money an option buyer can lose. Now, they can make many times more than that in profits, but that is the most they can lose is how much they paid for that premium. The option seller is on the other side of that contract, so they are the ones that receive the premium, and the most amount of money an option seller can make is that premium that they received. In the best case scenario, an option seller sells a contract and that contract expires completely worthless, so the option seller gets to keep the entire premium. The amount of money an option seller can lose varies a lot depending on the strategy that that option trader is taking on, and I will be talking about that a little later on in the video. But now you might be wondering, why would I wanna sell options if I can make a lot more money buying options? And the answer to that question is that the option seller, when it's done properly, has a higher chance of profiting. So you can't make as much profits selling options as you can buying options, but you do have higher chances of profiting. The simple answer as to how you have a higher chance to make money when you're selling options as compared to buying options is because you have a whole nother direction that you can profit from. So if you sell a call option, you profit if that stock price goes down or if the stock price remains the same. So whenever you're buying an option, you only profit if the stock goes in that one direction. So if you bought a call option, you only profit if the stock goes up. And if you bought a put option, you only profit if the stock goes down. So you have a whole nother direction. And if you remember theta from my other video, theta is time decay. It works against option buyers, but it works for option sellers. So these are reasons why you have statistically higher chances of profiting from option selling as compared to option buying. So let's first talk about call options. So if you remember, whenever you're buying a call option, you are buying the right to buy 100 shares of a stock at a predetermined price, the strike price. That means that the option seller, the other person on the side of that trade, would have to sell those 100 shares at that strike price. You see, option buyers, whenever they pay that premium, they receive a right. That contract gives them a right. The option seller, whenever they sell that contract and they receive that premium, they agree to an obligation. If the option buyer decides to exercise that right, the option seller has to comply and make that transaction. So in the case where you are selling a call option, for shares that you do not already own, let's say that you sold a call option on Apple, if you don't own 100 shares of Apple, this strategy is called selling a naked call. Now, selling a naked call is a very, very risky strategy that I don't recommend for anyone, but that's what it's called. Now, in the case where you do own the shares of the contract you are selling, so if you own 100 shares of Apple and you are selling a call option on Apple, that is called selling a covered call. Now this is a much better and safer strategy. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna give three scenarios so that you understand fully the selling of call options. 
So let's start with scenario number one. Let's say that I wanna sell a call option on Apple because I think the stock is gonna go down. Remember, everything is reversed whenever you are selling options. So if you buy a call option, you think the stock is gonna go up. If you sell a call option, you profit if the stock goes down or if it just goes sideways. So let's say that I do not already own 100 shares. Remember, for it to be a covered call, you either have to own the full 100 shares if you own anything less and you're selling a call, it is a naked call. You have to own the full 100 shares for it to be a covered call. So let's say that I think Apple is gonna go down in the near term and I do not own the 100 shares of Apple. So I'm gonna sell a naked call and the price of Apple right now is $121.70. But for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna say that, let's say that the price of Apple is exactly $120. So I'm gonna sell this call option here with a strike price of 125, meaning I think the price is gonna be below 125 by an expiration of April 1st, which is about a month from today. So let's say that in this scenario, by April 1st, Apple kind of bounced around a little bit, but it ended up at $123 per share by that date. That means that that option, since it expired below the strike price, it expired out of the money, AKA it expired worthless. So in the case where I sold this contract for $383 and it, the price of Apple finished at $123, I get to keep the full premium. I get to keep this full $383. Okay, so in scenario number two, let's say that I still don't own the 100 shares of Apple and I sell the exact same contract, so the $125 strike price for $383. But let's say that in this scenario, Apple ends up curing cancer, and the price of Apple just skyrockets to $300 per share. Well, guess what happens as the option seller? If the option buyer decides to exercise, I then have to buy 100 shares at that price of $300 per share, and then I have to sell it to the option buyer at $125 per share. That represents a $175 loss per share. Since a contract is worth 100 shares, that represents a $17,500 loss. So if the option expires in the money, meaning it expires with intrinsic worth, or it expires over $125 per share, I'm saying the same thing in many different ways to make sure that you guys understand it. So if the contract expires above $125 per share, that contract will be exercised and you will have to buy those 100 shares and sell it at whatever price. So if before it exercises, a, another thing an option seller can do is they can buy to close that position. So let's say that as Apple is going up, as the option seller, I'm getting a little nervous because I can see I'm losing a lot of money. Instead of waiting to see what happens by expiration, I can just buy that option back and completely close out of that contract. So as the price of Apple goes up, the price of this contract will go up. So let's say it's up at $600 and I'm getting nervous and I don't, I don't want it to keep going up. So I buy, I pay those $600 for this contract and I take that loss. So whatever $600 is minus what I initially sold this for, $383, that would be my loss as the option seller. Remember, we're selling a naked call, so that's why it can be so dangerous. If the price of Apple just keeps going up, you technically have potentially unlimited losses as a naked call option seller. So just a quick recap, you can either wait for it to get exercised or hope that the price of Apple goes down below the strike price, or you can always close that position by buying that option back. Whenever you buy that option back, you are canceling out of that contract and the contract is, is closed, it's done, there's no more contract. So just remember, those are the two things that you can do. And you can buy an option back, you can close out of a position at any point in time. Whether Apple goes up or down, you can always buy that option back. Hopefully, you buy it back at a lower price, that way you make a profit, but you can always buy it back. And let's say that in the third scenario, I do own the 100 shares of Apple and I'm selling a call option. Since I own the 100 shares, I am now selling a covered call. And let's say that Apple does really well and it ends up going to up to $150 per share. So I sold the same contract, this one right here, 
and Apple went up to $150 per share. Well, I don't have to buy the shares of Apple at that higher price and then sell it because I already own those shares. So I simply have to sell those 100 shares that I own at this strike price of $125. So as long as you bought Apple initially, you know, below this price, you would technically still be profiting. You would have the capital gains. So let's say I bought the 100 shares of Apple at $100 per share. And then I ended up having to sell Apple at $125 per share. Well, I still have a $25 per share capital gain. Plus, I get to keep this premium, this $383. So whenever you sell a covered call, you technically can't lose money. I mean, you could have, if, if I would have held on to the 100 shares of Apple and not sold a call, I could have profited more from the capital gains, but I'm technically not, not losing money. I'm just selling my Apple shares at a cheaper price than you probably want to. The idea behind selling a covered call is you wanna pick a strike price high enough that you don't think it will reach within your expiration that you choose. So if I really wanted to keep those 100 shares of Apple, I might, instead of selling the 125 strike, I might choose a higher one, like $127. I don't know why it's not scrolling right now. Now, the higher the strike you choose, the lower the premium, because you might be thinking, well, why don't you pick a ridiculously high strike price? That way you get to keep the shares and the premium. And you can do that. You can pick a much higher strike price, but the premium you're gonna receive is gonna be less. So it just, you have to find a balance between picking a strike price that you don't think that stock will reach and still receiving a decent premium. So you don't wanna pick something ridiculously high just for $10. All right, so I'm really hoping you guys are understanding this so far. All we got left is the put option, the selling of put options. So if you remember, whenever you buy a put option, you are buying the right to sell 100 shares at a strike price. That means that the put option seller on the other side of that trade might have to buy those 100 shares at that strike price. So whenever you buy a put option, you profit if the stock goes down. And whenever you sell a put option, you profit if the stock goes up or if it trends sideways. So let's say we were very bullish on Apple and we sold a put option. As you can see, I have sell and put toggled on. And we sell this put option here with 125 strike price for $723. Let's say that in the first case scenario, Apple ends up going up to $130. Fantastic. It's above the strike price, which means I don't have to buy anything and I get to keep the full $723 that I received. Now, let's say that in scenario number two, by expiration, which is April 1st, um, Apple actually ends up going down to $110 per share. Well, now I actually have to buy 100 shares of Apple at this strike price right here, $125, meaning I have to buy $12,500 worth of Apple. Now, I still get to keep the premium that I received, the $723, but I do have to buy those 100 shares. This is why it is a better idea to sell put options on stocks that you don't mind owning, even if the stock price drops. Because yeah, you are, if it goes down to $110 per share, you're paying more than what its current price is. But if you're very bullish on Apple long-term and you think it's gonna do well, it's not that horrible of a loss because hopefully with time, Apple will go you know, well above this strike price. Also, it's advisable, this is called selling a cash secured put, meaning you need to have the cash in your account to sell that put option for it to be a cash secured put. So you would have, in this case, your brokerage would lock up $12,500 whenever you sell this contract in the scenario, in the case that you do have to buy those 100 shares. So just be aware that the collateral needed to buy those 100 shares will be locked up by your brokerage so you will not be able to use that money anyway guys that's it for this video if you have any questions or if i skipped something that you want to know more on just comment down below and i will gladly make a video on it